Chris, what happened to the f- what happened to the funeral yesterday? Remember the phone call we were.
Good morning, and welcome to Our Lady Queen of Martyrs as we celebrate the 32nd, 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. As we prepare for Mass today, could you please take a moment to silence all of your electronic devices? Please rise to greet Bishop Sanchez and join in singing our opening hymn, which is number 45. The King Shall Come When Morning Dawns, number four, five.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. My dear friends in Christ, we rejoice as we come to open our hearts to God's Word and to offer this sacrifice of praise. To prepare ourselves to pray this morning, let us pause for a moment and call to mind our sin. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to life everlasting. we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve you with constancy. You are the author of all that is good, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. In those days, I, Daniel, heard this voice of the Lord. At that time, there shall arise Michael, the great prince, 
guardian of your people. It shall be a time unsurpassed in distress since nations began until that time. At that time, your people shall escape everyone who is found written in the book. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some, some shall live forever, others shall be an everlasting horror and disgrace. But the wise shall shine brightly like the splendor of the firmament, and those who lead the many to justice shall be like the stars forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, every priest stands daily at his ministry, offering frequently those same sacrifices that can never take away sins. But this one offered one sacrifice for sins and took his seat forever at the right hand of God. Now he waits until his enemies are made his footstool. For by one offering he has made perfect forever those who are being consecrated. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer offering for sin. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
hint at all times and pray that you may have the strength to stand before the Son of Man. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. <clears throat> In those days, while people were speaking about how the temple was adorned with costly stones and votive offerings, Jesus said, all that you see here the days will come when there will not be left one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. Then they asked him, teacher, when will this happen? What sign with it will there be when all these things happen? He answered, see that you not be deceived, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he and the time has come, do not follow them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified. For such things must, must happen first, but it will not immediately be the end. Then he said to them, nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be powerful earthquakes, famines, and plagues from place to place, and awesome sights and mighty signs will come from the sky. Before all this happens, however, they will seize and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and to prisons, and they will have you led before kings and governors because of my name. It will lead to your giving testimony. Remember, you are not to prepare your defense beforehand because I myself shall give you a wisdom in speaking that all your adversaries will be powerless to refute or resist. You will indeed be handed over by parents, brothers, relatives, and friends. You will be, and, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of your name, but not a hair on your head will be destroyed. By your perseverance, you will secure your lives the Gospel of the Lord. My, my dear friends in Christ, we are approaching, as we know, the end of the church year and begin the new church year with the first Sunday of Advent. And therefore the readings that we hear are readings that are kind of samba. They cause us to reflect. They're almost a little off-putting. And today the opening scene in the uh, gospel that we read is the scene of the temple adorned with costly stones and votive offerings. And the impression is that they, Jesus is standing there with others admiring this beautiful building and then Jesus says, all that you see here, the day will come when there will not be left one stone upon another, but they will all be thrown down. Well, picture what it would be like standing in front of some beautiful church building or any beautiful architectural building. Think of St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York, Saint, the Basilica of St. Peter's in Rome or even, I haven't been there, but they speak so highly of the Cathedral of Chartres in France. Think of standing before these buildings and hearing the words that these buildings will soon be destroyed. There will be no, no stone will be left. Well, that is the type of um, a resting scene that, um, re that uh, kind of reflects the readings that we are hearing. And basically, they go under the category that we call apocalyptic. The, um, 
the idea that there is a prediction, ultimately, of the end of the world. And of course, kind of we fall into this when bad things happen in our own lives and we think about the end of time. But I think it's important that we understand the language that is being used here and the message that is trying to be communicated. The word apocalyptic in itself is a Greek word that really means the unveiling, the taking away of the veil. And it's translated into Latin by the word that we translate into English, revelation. So even in the word itself in English, revelation, there is the indication of the veil which is removed, which is peeled back so that we can, as it were, see something that is being disclosed. And the disclosure, the unveiling, is meant to be uh, a sign of the times that will come, but a sign of the times that are not meant to frighten us, but are meant to increase our hope in the great power of God among us. The last words of today's gospel by one's perseverance one will endure. What we, well, we persevere precisely because of our faith in Christ. And we persevere because of the hope that Jesus brings us. So when we hear things about not only the falling of the stones of a beautiful architectural building or the falling of the stars in the sky, we don't think of that necessarily literally, but we perhaps can understand it more when we think of this, that for the ancient people, the stars and the sun and the moon, the so-called hosts of heaven, were given to them so that they could navigate, so that they could move, if you will, by boat or otherwise from place to place. We probably don't tend to do that much, except maybe in the middle of the day looking at the position of the sun and getting an idea of what time of day it is. But for us, of course, the instrument that helps us move from place to place is the the GPS. And basically, the instruction that the moon and the stars and the and the uh, and the sun will fall from the sky is a reminder that people will lose their sense of direction and of order and will be, in a sense, lost. Now, we take that thought and look at the life and person and event of Jesus Christ, and we say that, in a sense, that type of disorder or disorientation did happen with the death of Christ. But the thing that undid that uh, disorder was the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. So it is Jesus' resurrection that destroys the power of this world, and it is his dying and rising that peels back back the veil that enables us to see the true meaning of our life, the true compass of our life, the true direction of our life, precisely in the gift of the Holy Spirit. So death is not the final word, but it is God's gift of grace that continues to give us a sense of direction and orientation It is God's grace that enables us to deal with the setbacks and disappointments of today's world. So it is in that spirit that we come before the table of the Eucharist this morning. We do so with hope in our hearts, a hope that is born of our belief in the gift of God's spirit. May that spirit continue to direct us, 
may it prepare us for the coming season of Advent in two weeks, a season that enables us to continue, to continue to nourish our life of hope and faith. And may this Eucharist strengthen us to grow as witnesses of God's grace and people who continue to reflect his love and presence in today's world. My dear friends in Christ, let us join our hearts and our voices in the profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. In death he was buried. He rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, Come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. But the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life to come. Amen. Knowing the promise of hope that our God offers to all, let us bring our burdens to the Lord and ask for his divine assistance. For the church, that like Jesus himself, this mystical body of Christ might offer true hope in darkness to all those who suffer by intervening to end the persecutions and to offer compassionate care wherever possible. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For our nation, that we might have the insight to recognize those who are most in need so that we can provide the concrete assistance that will move them from the darkness of despair into the light of hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear our For those gathered here today, that we might always remember God's promise to rescue us from distress so that we can persevere in hope no matter the challenges we must face. Let us pray to the Lord. For the poor, the hungry, the homeless, the aged, the lonely, the grieving, the anxious, those who are out of work or facing financial difficulties, and those who have no one to pray for them, may God raise them up and answer their needs. Let us pray to the Lord. For our Holy Father's intention for November, that people who suffer from depression or burnout 
will find support and light that opens them up to life. Let us pray to the Lord. For healing for those who those with COVID-19, for the protection of those who are most at risk, and for everyone affected by the continuing pandemic. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who are sick, especially those listed in our church bulletin and their caregivers. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died, especially Hannah Honey Brown, Ro Robbie and Shin Brunner, Reverend Julian Estivern, Lillian Colley, Edward Hunt, Joseph Montalbano, Janet Oates, and Cameron Rodriguez, and for the commemoration of the faithful departed. Cleonis Loseco, Sheila Lucy, Venera Macaluzo, Anne Carol Macho, John David Meher, Ronald J. Mahler, Maureen M. Mahoney, Betty Mancino, Michael F. Mancino, Geraldine Mangan, Angela Margiata, Hernan Gilberto Marine, Marina Martinez, Clara Mazzirino Baracol, that they celebrate everlasting life in Christ Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. God, you promised to come with great power and glory to claim those you have chosen. Hear the prayers we offer and help us to turn ever more faithfully to you. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.
my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, <clears throat> grant, O Lord, we pray that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, creator of the world and source of all life. For you never forsake the works of your wisdom, but by your providence are even now at work in our midst. With mighty hand and outstretched arm, you led your people Israel through the desert. Now as your church makes her pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany her by the power of the Holy Spirit and lead her along the path of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom. And so with the choirs of angels and saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. O God, you love the human race. You walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst. When we are gathered by his love and when as ones for the disciples, so now for us he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving you thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross, to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so having called us to your table, O Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis, our Pope, Nicholas, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and Glorious Martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity 
in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
The communion hymn is number 589, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light, number 589. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the announcements. And today's second collection will help cost of our Christmas music and liturgy programs. There's also an envelope to help with the cost of our pastoral care program next Sunday. Collection will be for the St. Vincent de Paul Society. There's also an envelope for the Catholic Campaign for Human Development, which is a national anti-poverty program. The um, I want to thank everybody who brought uh, to church this morning clothing donations for the St. Vincent de Paul truck. Thank everybody who's participating in our Thanksgiving canned and non-perishable food drive. Um, if you have canned foods today, you can leave them to my right here on that table, and we will collect again on Thanksgiving Day, which is no November 25th, when the Mass will be at 10 a.m. The choir members are selling Sacred Music Society sweepstakes tickets after Mass today. And again, next weekend, the um, fundraiser helps to support our special liturgies and concerts presented by the Sacred Music Society. The um, Christmas Music Festival, sponsored by our music director and choir is on Sunday, December the 12th at 4 p.m. Tickets for that event can be purchased in the rectory. We're asking the ticket holders show proof of vaccination and a matching ID at the doors of the church on that day, December 12th. We continue to live stream these masses at 9 a.m. and 11.15 on Sunday. We welcome those who join us by live stream. Our Christmas giving tree toy drive begins at the end of the month, the last weekend of November, the 27th, the 28th, which is the first Sunday of Advent. Our faith sharing groups continue to meet on Zoom, and there's con contact information about those groups in the bulletin. As we mentioned, I will be celebrating a Mass of Thanksgiving on December the 5th at 1 p.m to um, praise God for the occasion of my 50th anniversary as a priest. Those who are able to join are invited to do so. And I continue to... <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you very much. And please continue to pray for me as I, as I pray for each one of you. The Lord be with you. May the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your minds and hearts in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go forth in peace, glorifying God with our lives. Our closing hymn is number 577, Soon and Very Soon, number 577. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon. Thank you.